From bright jackets and gloves to a winter coat and some boots. On the South Island, there is no dress code if you ride a bike. Some are dressed to ride, others a little more casual. But whatever you're wearing when you're pedaling around town, there's no question this is a cycling city, one that many say has the potential to grow. Take this video of commuters in Copenhagen, Denmark. Sure, it's sped up, but the number of people going about their lives on two wheels is impressive. Yeah, cycling in Copenhagen is a bit like brushing your teeth because you don't have a union of toothbrushes uh, getting together and brushing their teeth and talking about how great it is to brush your teeth. And the same way for most Copenhageners, they wouldn't say, oh, I'm a cyclist, that's something special, no, that's just something they do. And they do it well. Andreas Roll is the head of the bicycling program for the city of Copenhagen. He was in Victoria to share what he's learned by living in a city where cycling is in their genes. If you want to go somewhere, you often want to go there pretty quickly and you want to, it should be convenient or comfortable and that's, that's the key why many people in Copenhagen choose to go on a bicycle. In fact, it's, it's not that special. Andreas Roll says half of all people who live and work in the city of Copenhagen cycle to work. And even when that trip extends outside the city, 35% of people still ride their bikes. In the capital region, those numbers are more like 5%. One of the things I say is about thinking the trip all the way from A to B and kind of respect people, respect their choices, and you have to give them good quality before a lot of people will choose to go on a bicycle. And Roll says quick, direct and safe options for bikes can mean tough choices for local politicians. He says there's only so much space on the road and sometimes that means taking some of that space away from cars and drivers, like right here on Fort Street. Speaking to someone who both drives and bicycles along Fort Street, so I see it from both both directions and I think it's a pretty good compromise. And there may be other streets and we're always looking for them where we can reach that same kind of compromise. And Young says Cook Street in Victoria and Shelburne Street in Saanich are two streets where compromise might have to be made in order to build more cycling lanes. It's something you, you don't achieve overnight as you gradually make the streets more friendly to bicycles. Uh, you get more and more people riding bicycles and that justifies uh, transferring a bit of road space toward bicycles. And Young says that all takes money. A surprising amount, he says, just to paint on some new lines. But the Greater Victoria Cycling Coalition says it has to be done. I think one of the things that they've really, that they've done in Denmark as well as Holland is remove cyclists from the traffic. So it's not ve vehicular cycling like we have here in North America. That's become the, the common practice. And that's been very successful, uh, the increasing the number of cyclists. We give them their own space and we give them good conditions and they will, a lot of people will choose to go on a bicycle. And Rule says in Copenhagen, a bicycle lane is divided from traffic with something like a lane of parked cars or a barrier. And he says even the traffic lights are timed for cyclists, not drivers. In the examples that we've seen in North America and other places around the world, it is uh, good infrastructure is generally followed by more cyclists using that infrastructure and it may take five or so years. Miker says that build it and they will come idea will work in Greater Victoria and the CRD says there is a plan to get there. The CRD's pedestrian and cycling master plan calls for another 650 kilometers of what it calls stress-free bike lanes in hopes that by 2038 15 to 25 percent of all trips in the CRD are done on two wheels. In Victoria, I'm Nikki Ewanishan for The Daily.